Welcome back to the Stronger by Science channel where we get stronger by science. Today, we're talking about warm-ups. Yes, warm-ups. And I see a lot of you lifters out there doing really lengthy warm-ups, doing a bunch of exercises, using a bunch of different modalities, spending a lot of time warming up and just feeling like if you skip parts of your warm-up, you may be leaving gains on the table. But as the neon sign implies, we are stronger by what? by science. And we're going to look at specifically the literature, the scientific literature on warmups and what it actually says. When it comes to warmups and lifting performance and more specifically strength, things uh, are not as clear as one would assume in the literature. Um, if you were to go to a powerlifting gym or to a strength gym, I guess where people do all sorts of strength training, including powerlifting, you'd assume that we have a very clear understanding about warmups given the practices of experienced lifters. That includes myself as well. I warm up before I do a heavy deadlift. I don't just go straight into it. However, when it comes to the current literature, things are not as clear. A narrative review uh, published in 2021, and side note, a narrative review is essentially the author's take on the literature as we put it when we published a narrative review it's like a peer-reviewed blog post that goes over the current literature but obviously we care to judge a paper by the information that it presents however in contrast to a systematic review where we can actually trace back the steps of the authors and see exactly how they located what they located and how they came up with their specific search terms and the databases that they used in order to source the current literature and our review is more on the side of you select papers that you think are relevant to your topic and you discuss them slash review them which leads to a greater risk for bias as certain papers may not make it in that review however Given that the current literature on warmups is still and somewhat not its infancy, but there's still more to learn, this narrative review specifically found one, that more research is needed, but more specifically, that either a combination of a general and specific warmup, a general warmup being a general aerobic warmup that gets your muscle temperature up, if that could be anything from a walk on a treadmill for 10 minutes or as typically seen in most studies cycling on a cycle ergometer at around 60 percent of one's maximum heart rate for again 10 to 20 minutes or a specific warm-up meaning a warm-up that actually has you doing the exercise that you're warming up for and it's usually warm-ups that utilize a heavy load that lead to more favorable one repetition strength outcomes versus warm-ups that utilize lower loads so we'll look at one study in particular just to give you an example but the current totality of scientific evidence when it comes to warm-ups for lifting performance highlights that look doing some form of general warm-up before you're lifting is probably a good idea followed by an actual warm-up on the exercise that you're doing where you're progressively increasing loads um, that's a really really safe bet when it comes to your performance. However, even just a specific warm-up may be enough for you to maximize lifting performance. And when it comes to long-term data and hypertrophy, we don't really have much. But let's look at one study in particular where they compared a general and specific warm-up to just a specific warm-up to see what they found. Now, keep in mind that this is not the study, but it is a good example of a study that has found a favorable effect of a general and specific warm-up on strength. However, as noted, the literature is not entirely clear on whether that general warm-up is an absolute must every time you train. So let's look at it. So the study was a crossover design study, meaning that the participants that took part essentially took part in both conditions tested in the study. 13 resistance trained male participants took part and they, the authors essentially looked at a general plus specific warm-up versus a specific warm-up on leg press one repetition maximum strength. So the general warm-up group essentially did 20 minutes of cycling at 60% on a cycle ergometer and then did a specific warm-up where they did a single set 
of eight reps at 50% of their one repetition maximum strength, followed by a set of three reps at 70% of their one repetition maximum strength. And the group that did just the specific warm up did just a specific warm up that I just described without the cycling before. Overall, the authors found that the condition that included both the general and specific warm up resulted in 8% greater 1RM values for the leg press, which could potentially, and take this with a pinch of salt, be attributed to the general warm up increasing muscle temperature and then having the specific warm up to specifically practice the lift that the participants were doing. But as noted, we are still not 100% clear on whether um, the a general warm up before a specific warm up is always needed in order for you to reap all the benefits that warm ups have to offer. Now, the reason that I'm saying this is one, the specific warm ups in many of these studies in the literature either include a couple of sets and specific repetitions at specific percentage of 1RM, sometimes even one set. So there's another study uh, that looked at squat and bench press by Ribeiro et al, uh, published in 2020, where they had three conditions. The first warm up was a light and heavy warm up at and where the participants essentially did two sets of six reps at 40 and 80% of their 1RM. And then they had a couple more conditions where the participants did either one set of six reps at 40% or one set of six reps at 80% of their 1RM. Keep in mind that these warm up protocols in many of the studies that we see do not necessarily mimic what many of us do when we go to the gym and warm up for a specific lift. So for many of you, when getting ready for a squat, I assume that you'll start and do a couple of sets with a bar, then add a bit of weight, do another few sets of five, add a bit more weight and keep adding weight until you reach your working set with not and not necessarily doing one or two sets of six reps at a fixed percentage of your one RM and then going to your working set. Keep in mind that the more sort of traditional in the trenches, at least from my coaching experience and some of the studies that we've done on power lifters, um, that sort of specific warm up may count as a general warm up to a certain extent, given the multitude of uh, sets used and the very light load sets at the beginning that could potentially have the same effect as, you know, a general warm up on a cycle ergometer or something. So that's one disclaimer. The other disclaimer is that some other studies haven't looked specifically at one repetition maximum strength as their main outcome, but have looked at propulsive velocity, power, RPE, and in general, have not really looked at long-term adaptations when it comes to strength, but also hypertrophy. Also, keep in mind that solely looking at one repetition maximum strength, as they've done in some of these studies, where we see that heavier warmups tend to do better than lighter warmups, and sometimes adding a general warmup is a good idea. Keep in mind that these are also not telling us a, a ton. They tell us something, but they don't tell us a ton about long-term strength adaptations and whether you just need a warm-up whenever you're getting ready for a one repetition maximum attempt or whether the, that warm-up would have made a difference if you were to do a bunch of working sets where the working sets at the beginning of your session would essentially count as a warm-up themselves. Disclaimers, more research to be done and at the same time it is important from a practical takeaway standpoint to not solely focus on the fact that we don't have enough research to come to a definitive conclusion, but based on the current evidence, if you're somebody who's trying to maximize your strength performance during a lifting session, it may be a good idea to include some form of minimal general warm up, which can take any form you like, as long as it allows you to get a bit warmer, get your heart rate up. That could be anything from dynamic stretching to again, using a cycle ergometer or even doing more of the exercise itself for more sets, either using an empty bar or, you know, very, very low loads, and then proceeding to your specific warm-up. However, based on the current literature, it does seem that just a specific warm-up by itself is probably fine for you to have an amazing session and do great as far as strength performance goes. Although, if you're getting ready to max out and you're not there to just train, adding the general warm-up is only going to take you a few more minutes 
and at when worst case scenario, it's not gonna have a negative effect and it may actually give you an extra performance boost. But I hear you saying, Dr. Pack, that's all great. But the reason I warm up is to decrease my risk of injury. And that's something that I understand a lot of lifters do. So let's have a very, very brief look at the current literature as far as warmups and injury risk go. So a 2015 study, and this was not in particular focused on lifting, power lifting, or any sort of traditional strength lifting, that looked at the upper body warmups and their effect on injury risk found drum roll. They didn't have any studies to look at, so they didn't find much. However, if we look a couple of years back at a 2013 meta-analysis that looked at injury risk in athletes and how that can be mitigated, overall, they found that strength training in itself was somewhat protective of injury. In terms of this supply, a lot of things to unpack there. But strength training had a positive effect on injury risk, but stretching, for example, did not have an effect on injury. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because us lifters were already engaging in strength training, and that seems by itself to have a positive effect on decreasing injury risk. So when it comes to a warm up specifically further reducing injury risk, although the current literature does point at things like plyometrics, potentially, and not necessarily as part of a warm-up, having some positive effect on decreasing injury risk and even dynamic stretching to a certain extent being associated with a lower injury uh, incidence in some populations. Overall, if you're strength training and you are performing some form of warm-up, either being just a specific warm-up or a general and a specific warm-up if you want to make every educated event and maximize your performance. You are taking some boxes, it seems, uh, when it comes to preventing injury. We don't really know um, if there is much more that we can do to actually prevent injury. Injury is quite uh, a complex topic, but the literature at least is clear that there is no magic solution and there's no form of stretching or foam rolling or any sort of magical warm-up combination that will massively decrease injury risk. So as long as you are somewhat warmed up and then you do your specific warm-up or if you do a lengthier specific warm-up to get warmed up and you're engaging in resistance training and you're getting stronger over time, that is probably putting you in a really good space as far as preventing injury goes. Terms of condition supply, obviously how you manage your training, your load, your stress will also play an effect on injury. And injury is something that sometimes happens randomly. We can't really predict it. And in general is a whole other rabbit hole by itself. But overall, general warm-up, great. Specific warm-up, somewhat mandatory for strength, uh, specific outcomes. But if you're somebody who's just interested in getting bigger and you do not care about maximizing strength performance uh, on any given lift in a session, especially if you don't um, train with lifts that are somewhat more skill-based than others, let's say you're doing mostly machine work, my hunch based on the current evidence is that even um, a quick, a relatively quick warm-up on a couple of machines that you're training on. So spending 10 minutes on a chest press, um, doing a few light sets, and then starting your workout and doing your working sets, that will count as enough of a warm up to allow you to move on to the rest of your session. Ideally, having a warm up set on most exercises as just a general feeling the exercise set, I'd, I'd call it. It's not a bad idea. It's not gonna require a whole lot of time commitment from you. At the same time, it may count as a specific warm up and lead to a slight performance boost. But worst case scenario, it is a safe bet when it comes to maximizing performance. But take that with a pinch of salt because we don't have much long term data, if any, on warm ups and their effect on hypertrophy or long term strength adaptations. That is the video. If you're somebody who warms up, 
for quite a while and that's more of a ritual. Let's say you're a competitive power lifter and you're doing a bunch of rehab exercises that make you feel better and allow you to have a more productive session. Feel free to keep those in. Just know that if you're pressed for time, you could potentially just skip those, do an extended specific warm up that will somewhat count as a general warm up as well. And you'll likely be more than fine, both from a performance and injury prevention standpoint. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification icon, more videos coming, collabs coming, and please make sure to check out the podcast for an in-depth breakdown in all things lifting. Check out strongerbyscience.com slash coaching for amazing evidence-based coaching, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, mm-hmm.